Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 9, Episode 2. This is another good episode, so let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe. I plan to do move on to the landscape artist of the year soon. So here's our first contestant up. Remember they did these self-portraits in order to appear on the program. This was what was juried through. And they're always really, really good and they're always really, really varied. And I enjoy this part of the program because I think it shows a lot of creativity. We've all seen self-portraits and they're sometimes are surprising ways that people will put a new twist on it. Not all the time, but uh, but anyway, it's uh, it's an enjoyable part of the program. This, I believe, is a drawing, but we're going to see more from her later. Uh, it's very very precise. <laughs> I really I enjoy the bathing cap thing going on. That's really interesting. I love this. Oh gosh, I love this. This excites me a lot because it's on the verge of abstract and realism. I, I love when that line is, is, it's just in between. This is a more stylized portrait. I guess she had brown hair at one point. Remember, the self-portraits aren't necessarily done recently. Some of the self-portraits have been done years and years ago. This one um, kind of surprised me. It's, it's, We'll, we're going to talk more about this as the program goes on, but uh, but I'll just say surprise. This one excited me a lot. There's something that I really like about the coloration of this and um, that little bit of a glance. It's almost sometimes you can see the inside of a person at, uh, rather than just the facade, and I felt like that portrait did. And here's the last one. So we have a really, really good field. And let's see who our celebrity models are. Now, our first celebrity model up is Lulu, who was a very famous singer back in the mid-60s and is best known for her song in the film To Sir With Love, which starred Sidney Poitier. I haven't seen her in years and years, but I think she's had a very good and long career and is very well known in the UK. Now, four hours into the episode, the artists turn their easels around and she and we get our first look at what they've done. She's gonna pick one to take home. This has nothing to do with the final judging. That is a separate event. So here's the first one up. I really like this painting a lot. I like the exciting color of it. It has a lot of outlining on it, but it also has a, a, an investigation of the forms. There's something slightly off in the proportions, and it's very slight, so I'm getting picky here. Let's see what happens when we pull back. Sometimes, you, you, which is why you have to walk away from your easel. You know, if you're right on top of your easel, it looks perfectly fine, but you gotta walk away. That's where uh, things start to appear that you didn't see when you were close up. Yeah, that looks that looks really, really good. Um, now, how that will stack up against the rest of the field, we don't know yet, but it, it has a certain strength to it. This one, ooh, I really like this one. Uh, first of all, it looks very, very much like her, so it's very recognizable. And behind her, if you're wondering what that kind of grayish form, she brought some sort of metal or honor that she had, which was sculptural, so that's what's behind her. I think this person caught the light, which is very difficult to do under artificial light. And I really like when someone will find all the specific shapes, assign a color to them, and then put different colors and shapes adjacent and eventually forms emerge. And that's what happened here. Yeah, see when you pull away, that has more impact than the first one we had. And that's simply because there's more color contrast in this one than there was in the first one. They're the both are, I'm not saying one is better than the other. They're both really excellent. So as always, the judge is gonna have a difficult time. And as, as usual, I know that I'm gonna disagree with them. Now this one, this one has a few problems for me. First of all, you know, as an artist, you have to be an editor too. And I'm sure this is what the artist saw with that award sticking up above her head. I'm sure, absolutely certain that's what he saw and he was trying to be, or she was trying to be as accurate as possible. But as a design element, it just bothers me to have this 
shape that appears to make no sense out of context and have and plop it there on top of her head. It just, yeah, I I made special note of it as I was looking over my notes because sometimes you just have to edit it it and not show what was right in front of you, but have the design sense to say, you know what, that doesn't help my picture. I need to take it out. Put your finger up and cover up that gray, what looks like a moon from here above her head. And you'll see it's a better painter right, painting right away. So simply on that element, when it comes to composition, uh, I, I have to say that's one of those things that would just, <laughs> I can't help it. It would bug me over time. You, I can't have a painting in my house that my eye keeps going to, and I keep thinking, why, 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 why is that there? Everything needs to be resolved for me. All right, Lulu is going to pick one to take home. Let's see which one she picks. Yeah, she picks the strongest one of the bunch, and good for her. I would have picked that one, too. Now, the next model up is Philip Manzanera. He is an English musician and songwriter. I'm not familiar with him, but maybe you are. It's interesting. Singers, especially performers, often will show up in, you know, stage clothes. Most of us don't have these kinds of clothes because, you know, from stage you need to have a certain persona. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get our first look at what these three artists have done. And Let's see how that stacks up. All right, here's the first one up. This is a drawing. Now, this must be the woman who had a drawing of herself in the bathing cap for swimming because, as far as I can tell, she's the only pencil artist in the group. She's incredibly accurate, but does it have the kind of strength and gravitas that a painting needs to have in order to appear as a museum commission? Remember, on a huge, absolutely huge wall, I don't think it does, because when you pull away, see how it seems to disappear into the paper. Now, if she had more time, she could have built up more of those forms and saturated the color more, and we would have had something uh, more. That's all I can say. Now, she's going to be judged on what she did today, not on what she couldn't complete today. That's a fairly big drawing, too. That's a lot of space to cover. This next one up is just not as it's just someone who doesn't have the same experience as the person that we just saw with the drawing. It it has some real, it has some real problems in terms of it's it's quite stiff. I do think there's a design problem with that guitar uh, in the back. Not that you can't have the guitar in the back, but you see the negative shapes that it makes. Those are pretty unresolved for me. I that that is, or or maybe it would have made a difference if. The figure was more in focus and the shapes behind less in focus. And that's where lost and found edges become really important. Yeah, put your finger up and cover up that guitar. Now, if that had been cropped so that guitar wasn't there, or maybe the guitar moved down some, uh, it it just appears to be sort of like a dunce cap behind him. And it's it, it just... Everything needs to be considered, not just the figure, but what surrounds the figure. You know, the context is so super important. This is a really interesting one. It's a much more flat representation. And by flat, what I mean is that you don't see a lot of roundness of forms. And that's fine. That's a stylistic choice. Um, they've been pretty um, meager with paint as well. See where they've left a lot of white to show through. That's interesting to me. The colors are extremely saturated. I remember his self-portrait, which was really intriguing to me. I think he didn't... Well, yeah, what happened here, it, this is one of the traps. If you try to do the face and the whole figure, you, you're going to run out of time. Phil Manzanera has one to pick to take home. I think he's going to pick the drawing, but I could be wrong. Oh, he does pick the drawing. Good for him. And yay for her, because that's that's excellent work. So let's see now. Our last model up is Alex Brooker, who is an English journalist and presenter. <laughs> My notes, I thought it said preschooler. I thought, no, he, he cannot be a pre preschooler. Indeed, he is not. He is a presenter. And he looks like a television presenter. You know, they always have these really symmetrical faces. And so now we 
see the artists turn their easels around. Remember, the artists have been interrupted during this time. They've had a lunch break. They had two hours to paint, then a lunch break, and then two hours. But they've been interrupted for interviews and under hot camera lights. Here's the first one up. I really do like this painting a lot, and, and I don't think I like this person's self-portrait very much. It's very strong, very decisive. There's a nice light source coming from behind on the neck, so there's good contrast there. It's um, and has a likeness to the figure, so it's a, it's a strong contender. Yeah, even far away, it's a strong contender. Boy, I sure didn't like his self-portrait. I didn't mention it as we came in, you know, in the introductions, but, uh, but I was a little afraid he might do uh, the same type of thing. Well, it's similar, and we'll, uh, we're going to see more from this person later. And there we, we get to see it in context. That could, that could stand up in a gallery. Uh, it could also stand up in your home. Let's see what the next one is. Now this one is much more, oh, I guess you would call it blended. You're just, you don't see the patches of, of color making the forms. They've used blending in order to do it. It's not my personal preference. And for me, it always, not always, but so often will look like the figure has been um, painted somewhere else, cut out and pasted on the paper. Uh, it needs some lost and found edges for me. I want it to look like it's emerging from the canvas to some degree. There's a freedom to that. And that, that just comes from more uh, lots and lots of years of experience. Or maybe it's just a, a preference that some artists have. It's, it's a beautiful likeness of him. And she was smart to pick this size because she could get the job done. So she showed up, got the job done. I say good for her. Now we will go on to the third and last artist in this heat. Oh no, one more from her. Yeah, that's more close up. Um, yeah. It's not a painting I'm gonna remember in about um, two hours. Ah, here's the last one. This is, this is very interesting to me too because it looks very much like him. So, you know, why should you be penalized when you do an absolutely perfect, very good job? But, but, that's what I'm here for. And I do this to my own painting, so I'm not doing anything to these people that I don't do <laughs> to myself on a regular basis. Um, but for me, it looks very much like poster art. You know, if you if you um, you know if you go to a movie or in the in the it looks very commercial, as if you could it, as if it was on a billboard. And that's just stylistically there it's less painterly. So you don't get to see the brush strokes, but there's nothing, there's nothing really to say that's wrong about it. It just doesn't, for me, excite me as a, as a piece and makes me not want to see more from this painter. But boy, I really loved his self-portrait, so um, I'm conflicted. Alex Brooker is going to pick one to take home, and I think he's going to pick that first one. Oh no, he didn't. He picked this one. Wow, that surprises me, especially because the hand is sort of um, it's a little bothersome, isn't it? That shape of the hand. I'm sure it's what the artist saw, but sometimes if something just doesn't really make sense in your head, you, you got to change it. All right, judging begins. Now, the final judging means that all the artists are lined up, but only three can go on to the semifinals of this program, and then only one will go forward to the semifinals of the entire series episode, which is um, episode nine, which would have been... Um, shown in 2022. I'm sure they're very nervous. They haven't slept the night before. It must be incredibly nerve-wracking and exhausting. And I want them all to win, but they all won't. All right, the first one who's going to win is the person who has amazing drawing skills. And I'm glad to see that honored. It should be, but I don't think she has a chance of winning. <laughs> I mean, going on to the next part. All right, this one. Yeah, um... I had a feeling they would really go for this one. Yeah, I, and I can't really explain why. You know, once you watch the programs for a while, well, oh, oh, this is the one I think they're going to pick. Yeah, this is the one they're going to pick. Uh, but remember, hashtag Joe is always wrong. I think I've been twice, uh, right, twice. So don't, don't, don't count on that. All right, final judging begins. Now the part thing I like about the final judging is we get to see a little bit of the body of work. So we get to see, and there are our three final contestants. And now, and then we're gonna look at them individual, individually. The one on the far right was the um, self-portrait I just wasn't crazy about. It's something about it was just, 
um, oh gosh, just didn't fit the format or something. There's something about it. All right, first one up. Yes. Just as good a job when he had a lot of time as when he had time today. So, um, uh, this is the person I would pick, which probably means they're not going to win. So, we already know that. I mean, I'm guessing, but that's my, that's, that's my best guess. But we're looking for consistency over time, and can they get the job done? And yes, this person can. Oh, gosh. You know, wow. I mean, that's all you can say. Drawing is a little bit of a lost art, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's almost a stepchild to watercolor, which is a stepchild to acrylic, which is a stepchild to oil painting. But I really appreciate it. And this person has spent a lot of time on paper, and I bow down to that. That's, that's, that's a lifetime of work, and I'm glad that she's gotten the attention here. Here's the one that I just don't like, that self-portrait. And maybe it's just the eyes. There's just too much white around those eyes so that they don't, they don't settle into the head correctly. Something about it is just... I know it's supposed to be a very intense stare and everything, but something about the eyes aren't quite right, and I feel like there's something not quite right about the eyes on the portrait he did today. But, ooh, nitpick, why don't we, Joe McKenzie? I couldn't do better. Of course not. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Well, let's see. Oh, well, he's going to go on. Well, good for him. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.